given a line segment that connects the points negative 5, 7 and the point 7, 2. And you're asked to figure out how many units long is this line segment? Your first instinct might be to get out a ruler and to measure it. However, because we're working in units, your ruler might not be to the same scale. So how can we mathematically figure out how long this line segment is between these two points? One advantage to working with the XY coordinate plane is that although we can't look at a line segment that is diagonal and exactly measure how long it is by looking at it, what we do know is that each block is worth one unit. And if we travel horizontally or vertically along the blocks, we can actually calculate how long those lines are. So for instance, if we start at our first point here at negative 5, 7, and we travel all the way down vertically to here and then turn course and travel all the way horizontally to here we can figure out the two distances along those two routes by counting the blocks. Route number one is one, two, three, four, five blocks and root number 2 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 blocks long. This diagram might look very familiar to you. In fact, this is a right angle triangle. And luckily for us, we know how to solve lengths of right angle triangles if we're given two sides. This is the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem we know states that the hypotenuse side or C side squared equals the sum of the other two sides squared so A squared plus B squared we call those the legs well how do we figure out the length of the hypotenuse here let's use 5 and 12 as our two lengths for our legs and we'll solve for C C squared equals 5 squared plus 12 squared. 5 squared is 25 and 12 squared is 144. So we end up with C squared equals 169. So what is the value of just C by itself? Well, we'll take the square root of both sides and we end up with C equaling 13. 13 units exactly. And that is the length of that line segment from point 1 to point 2. This fundamental thought process is exactly how we're going to come up with an equation to figure out the length of any line segment from any point A to any point B. We're going to utilize our knowledge of Pythagorean theorem. Here's that same diagram again. But in place of putting numbers in for the points, we're just going to use x1 and y1 for our first point, point A, and x2 and y2 for our second point, point B. If we want to figure out the length of line segment AB, we need to first figure out what these other lengths are that create this right angle triangle. Let's put those two other line segments back on like we did before. We'll start with this horizontal line segment here. We know that the distance from this point to this point is however many blocks there are from there to there because it's a horizontal line. Well this point is at the point x2, y2 and the x value at this point is x2, whatever that value happens to be. Over here the x value is x1. This is the same uh, horizontal distance along the x-axis as the point A. So we're going to say this is x1. So the distance from here to here is the difference in value from point x1 to point x2. How far is it from there to there? And when we say the difference in value, what we mean is to subtract. Take the higher value 
x2, and we're going to subtract the lower value x1. That will give us the distance between those two points. If this value was 10 and this value was negative 5, well we know the distance from 10 to negative 5 should be 15 total blocks. 10 subtract negative 5 is the same as 10 plus 5, which is 15. The same logic will apply up here. We know that the y value at this dot right here is y2, and we know the y value at this dot right here is y1. So if we want to figure out the difference in distance, we're going to say, well, that's y2 minus y1. This one ends up being negative, though, because we're going downwards. We take the smaller number and subtract the bigger number, we'll get a negative number. But we'll see that that's okay. Let's pull our Pythagorean theorem formula up here again. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Remember that c represents the length of the line segment that we're looking for. So I'm going to rename that as the length of line segment AB. That cursive L comes to signify length. And of course that's being squared, right? C squared. Well, what does A represent? A represents one of our legs. So let's take this horizontal leg. We know the length of that leg is x2 minus x1. So let's take that value, x2 minus x1 and put it all squared. Now we're going to add the second leg's length all squared, which is y2 minus y1. So that's y2 minus y1 all squared. All we've done is replace our a, b, and c values with what we've shown on the diagram. Well this is equal to the length of a, b squared. What if we wanted just the length of AB by itself? Well, we've seen that in order to get this by itself, we need to square root. So it turns out that the length of side or line segment AB is equal to the square root of all of this right here. x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. And that is our length of a line segment formula. As long as we know what the two point coordinates are, x1, y1, and x2, y2, we can plug them into our equation and then square this, square this, and then square root the entire thing and we'll end up with our length. Sometimes it'll be a whole number, sometimes we may have to leave it as a radical number or a number underneath the square root and sometimes we'll round it. So let's do an example. Find the length of the line segment that connects the points A, which is 10, negative 3, and the point B, negative 8, 5. Let's first label our points as x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. It'll be easier for us to see these values once we plug them into our formula. So our length formula is up here. And I'm going to rewrite it as we work through this. The length of AB equals the square root. And now let's plug in our values. So x2 minus x1. x2 is negative 8. x1 is 10. So minus 10. That's all going to be squared. Whatever that answer is, it'll be squared. Plus y2 minus y1. y2 is 5, and y1 is negative 3. So we're going to be subtracting negative 3. I'm sure to put that in brackets because we're subtracting a negative. We don't want to get confused as to what we're go what's going on. Well, negative 8 subtract 10 is negative 18. So this is going to end up being the square root of negative 18, all squared, plus 
5 subtract negative 3. Subtracting a negative is adding. So 5 plus 3 is 8. So plus 8 squared. Remember before we said that one of the legs ended up being negative. In this case, this leg is negative, negative 18. The reason why that's not an issue is because we're going to be squaring that value. Any negative or positive number squared will end up being positive. So the fact that we have negative 18 won't make a difference when we square it. Negative 18 is a tough number to square, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it into our calculator here. And then when we square it, we get 324. So 324 is negative 18 squared. 8 squared is a bit easier, that's 64. And so we'll add those two numbers together. 324 plus 64 is 388. So the length of our line segment is the square root of 388. And if we leave it in this form, we say that this is the exact value. It's exact because we haven't rounded it to its nearest tenth or its nearest one hundredth. The square root of 388 is a number. If you type that into your calculator, you're going to get a decimal number. But if you're asked to leave it exact, you would leave it in this form. If you're asked to round it, though, now you're going to need to get your calculator back out to figure out what is the square root of 388. Well, doing that math, we see that the square root of 388 is 19.697, and it keeps going. So if we round this to the nearest tenth, we'll see that it's 19.7 units. So, or the length of AB is equal to 19.7 units. And because this is now rounded, we put this dot over an equal sign. That tells us that this isn't the exact value, 19.7, it's a rounded value. And we call this an approximate answer. So it's not an exact answer, this is an approximate answer. If a question asks you for an approximate answer, you'll need to round it. So finding the length of a line segment is as easy as using the length of a line segment formula. So get your two points and plug them in, and then determine whether or not you need an exact answer, keep it as a square rooted number, or an approximate answer where you can round it. Why didn't I go to